This is Emma. Wow. My mom watches these videos. She's gonna love her. Stop it. If I look a little worse for the wear, it's because I worked all morning. So this is definitely like an after work throw it together video. I'm gonna be talking about the books I read in the month of October. And honestly, October was a really difficult month, like a really difficult month. So I only read four books. So it's gonna be a quick, quick video. Mm. So the first book I read was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is one I really enjoyed. I gave it five out of five stars. One of my favorite books of the year, to be honest. Also, if you hear pittering around or snoring, snorting or eating, Emma's a pug, so it comes with the territory. Um, Jeanette McCurdy, this is a recent release, an autobiography that everyone's been raving about. It took a long time for me to get my hands on it just because it has been sold out to the point where they had to reprint more. So it performed abo far above and beyond what they expected, which is always nice to see for female authors, um, especially when it's nonfiction. Um, so Jeanette McCurdy is kind of diving into what it's like to be a young star and a young female star, her relationship with her mother, her struggles with ED, and honestly, it was such a page turner, which is such a weird thing to say about not a biography, but I zoomed through that book, and honestly, as soon as I finished it, I felt like I wanted to read it again. Next, I read The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This one I rated four out of five stars. It was a really cute, like cozy mystery. It takes place in a senior's village where there is a group of seniors that are all really interested in um, cold cases and mystery stories and until a murder happens in their village and basically they have to sort of band together it's a close-knit village everybody knows everybody everyone is somebody's best friend or long-time acquaintance so it really does kind of get the juices flowing pretty early and the narrative style is so much fun this is definitely a mystery that I would qualify as cozy, but also that I would say is very character driven. If you want something that is very fast paced and sort of sets the pulse racing, I wouldn't really recommend this, but something for the fall season um, to cuddle up with a blanket and really get involved with characters. And they're so charming, the town, the characters, uh, the whole atmosphere of this book was absolutely lovely. So next I read Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton and no surprise to anyone. I really enjoyed it. I gave it five out of five stars. I had such a great time. I actually, this is news to no one, am a little bit of a Harry Potter nerd. Um, but I actually wound up learning quite a few things while reading this, not specifically of the Harry Potter era, but more surrounding how Tom Felton got into acting, how he stayed in acting, and how at certain points he himself didn't really think it was a possibility. Contrary to like the Jeanette McCurdy sort of autobiographies I'm used to reading from actors, this one was a little bit different not just because it seems like the UK has a very different kind of, like the London scene is very, very different from reading about young Hollywood. That in and of itself was very bizarre. Like when reading, I'm glad my mom died, it seemed like young Hollywood treats these young stars very adult. Whereas reading from Tom Felton's perspective, it seems like the UK is very clear um, with the London acting scene for children, like that these adult actors do treat them as they are children still. It 
reflects that way, how they're treated in the studio, how they're treated with adult actors. So that was also pretty interesting. Um, but also just how he came about in acting and into stardom when seemingly he wasn't interested in it for a very long time. That was very interesting. And weirdly enough, like I said, a short but sweet video, the last book I read this month was The Witcher. So it has taken me a long time to work up to these books. I'm not exactly sure why. I think first and foremost, I just found the actual starting point for the series to be incredibly confusing for the books. And then when I tried to watch the TV show, I found that similarly just as confusing to try and start and keep up with. But now that I've read The Last Wish, I have a good idea of the starting point, who the Witcher is, the foundation of the story, the foundation of what kind of world we're dealing with, the folklore that is tied to it. So I feel a little bit better about it. I did pick up the next one and I fully intend to read that as well. I am definitely more into it now. I think I'll read one more book before I try the TV show again. Um, but I'm, I am starting to see the hype and understand it a little bit more. So I'm excited to progress in that just a little bit. A little bit at a time. It's not going to be on the forefront of series that I want to finish, but a little bit at a time. Like I absolutely zoomed through that book and I wound up reading it a four out of five. A couple of the stories I found a little bit lacking and meandering, but I'm also very much aware that it is a long series. So some of these things may, there might be callbacks to these short stories later on in the series. So that is going to be it for today's video. I thank you so much for watching. I expect to read a lot more in the month of November. I've already read about half of what I read in the month of October for next month, so I'm sure it's gonna pick up from here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.